Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, February 22nd, and this is a YouTube live event. Whether you are here with me live or you are watching the replay, I'm so glad that you've come by. Thank you for joining me. My trifold window card is a oh, wow tonight. And if you look at the picture, you might be thinking, oh, I don't know if I can do this. You absolutely can because I've got tons of tips for you tonight. And we're going to walk through some techniques as well. In addition to the card that I'm going to be demonstrating with you, I have several other samples to share with you and a great tip about the leftovers when we create that window for tonight's card. Now, as always, I would love to have you interact with me. So if you would sign into your YouTube account, which will allow you to comment or chat, we would love to hear about what you have to say, where you're from and what you like. And I'd also like to take this moment to introduce you to Megan. Megan's name is here with a tool symbol in front of it, and she is my virtual assistant, and yes, she is a real person. We are separated by 800 miles, but she is here to answer your questions because honestly, once I get stamping, it is impossible to keep up with all your comments and questions. And Megan does an excellent job at addressing those and helping you. And then finally, when tonight's live is all done, if you click underneath the title to this video in the video description, you'll find a link that will lead you over to my website where you'll find the pictures, the cutting dimensions and the supplies. And I'm pointing because I've got something special for you that we just started. Tonight is the first time. From now on, when I provide something for you, you're going to have a project sheet. And it's gonna look a little bit like this. It's on my website at that link below. There you're gonna be able to find pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for all the projects I shared with you tonight. Not just the one that I demonstrate. And here's the best thing. The pictures are linked to my online store to those products. So there's no guesswork involved. Everything is hyperlinked and made really, really easy for you. I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and turn the camera down and let's get you all zoomed in. Let's get started. Here we go. I hope that you're having better weather now than where we were about a week ago. Boy, I'll tell you what, it has been a weather, a winter, hasn't it everyone? Okay, bear with me. My tripod just wants to act a little persnickety tonight. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna start with two pieces of cardstock. Now these are the exact same size. I have all the cutting dimensions for you, so don't feel like you've gotta write it all down but these are four and a quarter by 11. They are both scored in half at five and a half inches. And you're gonna need both of these. And I'm just gonna crease them very slightly so that you can see that. We are gonna start by creating a background on one of these. So I'm gonna fold this one in half and I'm gonna use my bone folder. I like that nice crisp edge on my cards. And then I'm gonna bring in this. Now you might be looking at this going, that looks just like a cutting board. It is, it's a very thin wood cutting board. And this has become my new best friend when I'm stenciling or I'm watercoloring. It contains everything, which keeps my work surface nice and clean. It, I can't even tell you where I got it from. Just a real simple cutting board. I'm taking low tack tape and I rolled it up here and I'm gonna place that here in the center. And that's gonna hold my cardstock in place because there's nothing worse than trying to stencil on a piece of paper that you gotta chase, right? And then I've got my stencil here. This comes from the Basic Patterns Decorative Masks, and there are several impressions inside that package, and I absolutely love them because they're varied. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on here, and so that we don't have to fight with this as well, let's go ahead and use some more of that low-tech tape here on the sides, and that's gonna brace this down to that little board. I also find, too, that if I do this on paper and I go to lift it, sometimes it rips, and this just kind of, like I said, contains everything. I am going to be using a blending brush. Now these come in a trio pack, so you're gonna get three of them. I like lots of them because I dedicate one to each color family. I just stuck a small label on top of here and then I leave these in a solo cup, believe it or not, nothing fancy here in my studio so that I can pull out the one that I want. And I'm gonna be using a petal pink for a very subtle background on here. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna slide this over just a little bit so I'm inside your camera view. And we're gonna add a background to this. Now I suffer from osteoarthritis in my basal joints, which is down inside this area here. So I'm gonna hold the brush this way, which makes it easier for my hand versus this way. So keep in mind, whatever's easy for your hand is the way you're going to hold it. You're gonna load the brush with some ink. Now, obviously the darker colors are gonna have a stronger pigmentation, so you're not gonna need as much ink. And so one of my tips for you is if you're using one of those darker colors, give it a little tap here on your scratch paper to make sure you can control that coverage. If it's too, too, too dark, you're gonna have dark and light spots. 
if you're looking for that, fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in just one area and light circular motions. You're going to see how I'm holding the head of this brush. And I'm just working around the stencil. Now, let me give you a little tip about stenciling. What it looks like from the top is not what it looks like from underneath. So I'm going to caution you. If you're looking for a very subtle background, you're going to want to apply a very light layer of color first. Because remember, you can always go back and add more. So I'm going to do this just a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more ink. I'm going to rub some of that off. And I'm just going to very lightly in circular motions add a little bit more color here. And then we're going to take a peek. Because it's taped down, I know that it's anchored on one side, which is going to allow me to lift up one side of this kind of like a hinge and take a look at it. I'm not looking for even coverage. I am looking for some light and some dark areas just to create some interest. So let's go ahead and pull up this side here and let's take a quick peek. Oh, that looks good to me. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lift this. I save that because you can definitely reuse that. And that has given us a really pretty subtle background. Now, let me tell you what I do with this. Again, I don't waste this tape. I'm just gonna stick this right on top of my cutting board. It's got a lot of life in it. This now can be placed right underneath tap water and rinsed clean and allowed to air dry. Nothing fancy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and close that up for right now and I'm gonna move all this stuff off to the side because now we're gonna bring in this. Now you might be thinking, oh Lisa, I'm not seeing you use this too much. Well, this card is gonna be made creating an identical window from the front to the back and you need a stamp positioning tool and I love the Stampin' Up Stamparatus. It actually comes with two hinged plates. I don't know if you can see that here, but there's another spot here at the top for another hinge. So you can place lots and lots of pieces on here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a single hinge tonight just because I'm gonna take my time and walk you through the process and direction is important for me. I'm also going to show you that the notice that the hinge kind of lays flat here. There's a little bit of an area here that's higher than this side and I'm gonna take this. This is one of our clear stamp cases. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can buy these and they are great for storage. And that little ugly thing in there is actually a Stampin' chamois. Now, a lot of you have purchased these to clean your stamps with. And just like any chamois, they hold a lot of water. But do you see what I did? I actually cut it in half and I store it inside this box, which makes it really convenient. The other thing I do love about this is it tends to stay moist in here because I live in Florida and we have a little bit more humidity than most states. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off, but here's where the case comes into play. I'm gonna tuck it right underneath that window and this now has got me a very even work surface here. So it's gonna make everything nice and straight. I've got my chamois wet and that's off to the side. So let's start with that first piece. Remember, this is the front of the card. My crease is going to be here at the top. I'm going to align this in the corner. This corner can be down here, it can be over here. It's whatever's comfortable for your hand. Then once I'm happy with it, I am actually going to anchor this down and we're gonna do some stamping here. Now that comes with two magnets and you're going to see that I use several layers of washi tape. Even duct tape will work. This just gives me an area for for me to lift it because they are very, very strong. You don't want the two magnets to come into contact with each other, otherwise they can snap and break. They're very, very fragile because of the magnetism of the two. All right, so I'm gonna pull out some images here and I've got a flower and I've got a leaf. Now keep in mind, you're gonna wanna do this technique with mirrored stamps to dies. So I'm using a bundle of product and it's called Art Gallery and it comes with the beautiful floral gallery dies for which I've pulled out some here. I'm using multiple images and since this is a sizable flower, I'm looking right here at the bottom to kind of get my flower in place and I'm gonna put my bloom. If you're a little off center, it's okay because remember we're gonna do some mirrored stamping here which is why we need the stamp positioning tool. Once I've got an idea of where this is going to go, I'm gonna remove that stem. So I've got placement here. My image is face down and I'm going to close the door to my stamp apparatus and it's going to pick up that image. Remember, this is anchored here in the corner. The very first color I'm going to use is the petal pink, which is the one we just did the stenciling with. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink that up right on top of here. Remember, my stamp case is underneath. So no longer is this on a slant, it's nice and even. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this up and we're gonna press. Now, do you remember me telling you I have osteoarthritis in my hands? I find this difficult for me to do, especially if I have to use my thumbs. 
This is a good impression, but let me show you on the next one. Now we're gonna have to move this. So we're gonna take this one out of the way and we're gonna bring in that other piece that I showed you in the beginning. This time we're gonna work backwards. The crease is going to go here at the bottom because this is part of our trifold. So remember, this is the opening here at the top. I'm mimicking that corner for exact placement. We're gonna anchor that down. Let's ink this up one more time. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this. Remember I was talking to you about the strength in my hands? Well, thank you YouTube viewers because you all told me about this. This is a dry erase eraser. And I found that I can hold this very easily and I rub over this and oh my gosh, it's working so wonderfully. So thank you all for that tip. That is fantastic. And I wanted to share that with you. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that chamois, it's just lightly damp, and I'm gonna wipe this off. And then I'm gonna peel this image off. I've got a little paper towel here in case I got a little zealous with the water. And now we're gonna to go to the stem. So I'm just gonna line this up where I want it. And then guess what? All you're gonna do is close the hinge and that's gonna pick up your stamp. You gotta love that. And then next is the pear pizzazz. That's gonna be the color for my stem. And again, that's braced underneath there so it's nice and even. And then we are going to stamp that here. Here comes my dry eraser once again. And I'm gonna stamp that image here. Looks good, doesn't it? All right, we're gonna switch this one out and we're gonna put this one in and we're gonna brace it down. Remember the positioning is perfect. And we're gonna ink this one up again. And this one really doesn't even have to be perfect to be honest with you. We just kind of need an outline because this is gonna be where the window is. All right, and then one last step and your stamp may not have this, but I wanted to share it with you. This is a detailed image and it's called two-step stamping, which means exclusively when this was designed, it came with another image that's supposed to mirror over the top of this one to give you extra dimension. So what we're gonna do is close that up one more time, and then we are gonna ink this using Flirty Flamingo. Work with different colors to get different intensities so that you have that 3D look. And then here we go with that dry eraser again. I'm telling you what, I've fallen in love with this little $3 thing. And there we go. And then one more time on here. Now, if you're wondering, geez, why does she have to do it twice? It's gonna make perfect sense in just a minute. If you are making multiple cards, maybe you're making invitations or a bunch of thank you cards, Christmas cards, or you're just in a stamping marathon, the Stamp Radis Positioning Tool is a fantastic product. Now, let me tell something else to you about this stamp positioning tool. Let's say this isn't as dark as you want it. And I'm just gonna simulate this. Let's go ahead and ink this up one more time. You can go back over it a second time and add more color. Or even if you've missed a spot, look at that intensity. Isn't that fun? All right, so let's go ahead and close that up. And then I'm gonna clean this off just by wiping it. And then this is just gonna come off. You can see when you have this, you don't need the clear blocks. All right, let's take this out of the way. We are all finished with this. And now we're gonna start by working on our card. So we have these two pieces, fold at the top, fold at the bottom. The next step is to use this one, the front of the card to create the window for this trifold. Here are the coordinating dies. There's one for the top, and there's a separate one for the bottom. Now the bundle that you might be using of products, the stamps and the dies, may have one single image and that's perfect. But I want to teach you how to do this in case you actually had two pieces like I did. You are not going to want to die cut them at the exact same time. So die cut one and then die cut the other, all right? So let me push this off to the side for just a second because I didn't have room, believe it or not, to bring the machine in. So what I ended up with was this. Don't throw those away because that's gonna leave that opening on your card, but you've got some beautiful pieces here to work with. Now, when you're finished, it may look a little bit like this, which means you've got connected pieces here. Now, here's another one. You're gonna see the background. This one's a lot darker, but they're gonna be little stray pieces. And you might be concerned about that. Don't. Grab yourself a pair of scissors, and then all you're going to do is just snip away what you don't need. There is nothing fancy about this. You're after the window. Then you're going to see that you are going to have two pieces. You have now the window, and you have this piece. Crease the top, crease the bottom. What's going to happen is these two pieces are going to come together to create the trifold. Now, let me just line this up and show you. Do you see this? 
Isn't that neat? Now, little tip for you. You may need to shave off like a little 16th of an inch, maybe even an eighth of an inch here on the piece that opens at the top. It just depends on how careful you are with your stamp positioning tool. I find that the stamp apparatus works perfectly. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to embellish it and put the layers together so you can see how this works. And then don't forget about these pieces. I've got a great tip for you about this. The next thing I decided to do was use from that same suite of products, this beautiful acetate. It is gorgeous. Now, the one thing I love about it is it's gold on one side, silver on the other, which gives you lots and lots of options. Now, when I first purchased it, I didn't realize it, but it's got a protective film on it here. And it's really important that you peel that back before you cut it. Now, the reason it's there is to protect the acetate during shipping, and I love that Stampin' Up! does a really, really important job of doing that because you don't want this all scratched up before it gets to your house, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and add that now. I'm a big fan of my silicone craft sheet whenever I'm using adhesive because I happen to sometimes be a little excited and I get it all over my work surface and I'm fighting a sticky spot. So I'm using my Stampin' Seal Plus, and I'm going to add adhesive right along this strip here, and I'm going to end it here. And now what we're going to do is we are going to open this up and we are going to attach it here near the top crease of this card. Now, the one thing I found about this adhesive is it doesn't show as much as I thought it would when you're using acetate and vellum, which I really love. Now, if you're like me, you never cut perfect. So flip this over and designate a pair of scissors in your stamp area that are for sticky things. That's what that ribbon's for. Use that edge of the cardstock as a guide to cut away what you don't need so you have perfect ends every single time. All right, next step is we've got this other piece. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can put this piece with the crease at the bottom on top of here, or you can go the other way. It is entirely up to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go this way because if I had to shave a little bit off, it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to line this up with both pieces together here near the crease. So let's go ahead and flip this over. I am not a huge fan of liquid glue, but this is a project for liquid glue if you are not comfortable with trying to line it all up perfectly the first time. I'm gonna use small dashes of my Stampin' Seal Plus because it's very, very strong adhesive. This is not repositional by any sense of the word. So I wanna make sure that I don't buckle up the card as I attach it together. So here we go, we've got the opening of the card here with our window. We're taking this here, making sure the opening is at the top, and then we are going to line this up. Now, before I go too far, I always like to take a little peek and make sure it's gonna line up and it looks good, and then we're gonna tack that in place. All right, so let me show you how this goes. This is going to come down, this is gonna come up, and then this piece is gonna come here. All right, let's work on that inside because we don't wanna leave that naked. Look at that designer series paper. Does it not work beautifully with that decorative mask? This is again from that same suite of product called Fine Art. Look at it, it's almost too pretty to cover, isn't it? So I'm gonna add some adhesive here. I did use that exact same stamp set to add a birthday greeting to the front of this. And this is going to go on the inside of the card. Don't overlook these beautiful, subtle patterns in the designer series paper to stamp your greetings on. That is a great tip for you. And then you're gonna line this here. Now I only left about an eighth of an inch margin because I wanna leave a little bit of a white border all the way around. All right, let's go ahead and add some embellishments. Now we've got this beautiful olive ribbon, which I think beautifully goes with the pair. I'm gonna open up just the window here I'm making sure that my ribbon is nice and straight here on the inside. And let's go ahead and let's tie this off and to the left-hand side. We're gonna create a little bit of a focal point here. I like to make my bows either to the right or to the left, just to create a little visual interest. Now let's talk about making a bow because we get lots and lots and lots of questions about this. I was taught at a young child, as a very young age, my grandmother. Um, who was a seamstress, and we used to tie lots and lots of bows, so that's how I learned. So I'm going to go ahead and just tie it here and just make that single tie, but I'm going to give you one of the best bow hacks you've ever heard, and it's called a glue dot. So I'm going to grab a glue dot here. I'm going to reveal one of those. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool, and I'm literally going to ball this up. I don't even care what it looks like. It doesn't even matter if you touch it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that 
right here on my cardstock where I want that knot or that bow to actually start. Take your single tie, make sure your ribbon is straight, and it's going to get attached to the glue dot. Look at the tension is kept for you, so you don't have to be fighting with that. And then press that in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly turn this to make it easier for my hand. Which way do I want to go here? I'm going to go this way, and then I'm going to make a bow. I'm going to go over on this one and then under and through. Depending on which way the ribbon lies, you'll either want to go over or under. You'll get a feel for it. But if your bows look like mine, oftentimes your ends are all uneven, the loops are too big. So let me give you another tip. Either press or pinch the knot. And when you do, take the raw end and slightly pull. Do you see what happens? It allows you not to lose the tension on your bow, but allows you to align those loops so that they look really, really pretty. Let me grab my little ribbon scissors here. And let's give this a little bit of a haircut. There we go. That looks nice, doesn't it? And now let's go ahead and add the bling because I can't help myself. I've got metallic pearls here and you can see I've been a big fan of them. They come silver and gold and they have a really pretty brushed metallic finish. So they're not super, super shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and add a greeting to this as well. I stamped this right before you join me and all of this is part of this beautiful art gallery stamp set. You're gonna find this in the mini catalog. You can see those two-step images here. There are some other flowers and lots and lots of greetings. I made this long on purpose because I don't want anything to impede on the opening of my window. So let's go ahead and flip that over. I'm gonna grab a couple dimensionals here and I'm gonna put one on each of those sides. I'm gonna place one here and one here. And then I'm gonna remove the paper backing using my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment. I seriously cannot live without this tool. It's like my best friend. And then this now is going to go here across the bottom. Where you decide to put it is up to you, but I'm gonna focus this way a little bit off centered on purpose just for some visual interest. And we'll tack that here. When you open it, you're gonna see that there's absolutely no glue dots, no dimensionals showing so that your window is visible. Now these metallic pearls already have glue dots on the back, which make them really, really easy to use. So let's go ahead and place one up here. And then I'm gonna take another one here. And don't forget, I've got several other samples to share with you. And I also wanna show you what we're gonna do with those leftover flowers that we die cut from here, because we are not going to waste that. That is for sure. And let's place another there. I've got a couple stray here. Look at that. I'm not gonna waste those. We're gonna put those right back on that sheet. All right. There we go, we have our card. It is not difficult. And that stamp positioning tool, it allows all the work to be done for you. Just stamp multiples at a time. If you have all the card bases done, you can make a whole bunch of these in record time. You can certainly use designer series paper here if you'd like. Now let me show you what I did with those leftover pieces. I decided I wasn't gonna waste these because after all, we stamped them and they were pretty, right? So I grabbed another card base and I created just another card from it. It's very, very simple. I used the exact same concept. I used just some gold little threading here for a very simple card, cut the exact same way as one of these for this. So that's a great use for your leftover. But you might recall that I mentioned to you that I have several other samples and they use entirely different products. Look at this one. Now this one uses entirely two separate stamps that don't go together. My tip for you when you try this is to make sure that your images are going to fit here on the front of your card side by size or up and down so that you have plenty of room for the die to interact. I wanted two separate windows for this card. Do you see it here? This uses a product medley called Flowering Cactus. And can I just tell you, how much I love this. There's that subtle stencil background once again. And then look at the inside of this. Isn't this fun? I love it because it's different. Now there's one more that I made with this and I upscaled this one just a little bit just to add some designer series paper. So you recall that I said you can add designer series paper here to the front. You'll want to do that before you die cut. So you have perfect die cutting through the layers. Look at, isn't this fun? And then open this up. This one's a little fancier on the inside, isn't it? These stamps are fantastic. And there are the cactuses. Now, let me show you this medley because I think it's a sleeper product here in the mini catalog. 
You're going to find it right here on page nine. Look at this. When we say product medley, we mean that you're getting everything for one price. You're going to get the stamps, the dies, all the designer series paper, that amazing twine. And of course, you're going to get these felt embellishments, which are exactly what are here. There's also dies to create those little prickly parts for the cactus, which are lots and lots of fun. Super, super, super product medley. And that is in the mini catalog. And I'll tell you what, now is a great time to buy, and there's only a few days left, of Stampin' Up's large sale of the year. This is called Celebration. Now, it does come twice a year starting this year. It is ending this time on February 28th, and it's not coming back to the summer. But here's the good news. For every $50 in product that you spend before shipping and tax, you're going to be able to choose free product from this exclusive brochure anything of your choice. You got to love being able to be empowered to make your own selections. And for those of you that are maybe a little bit like me and you're thinking, mm, I think I might want it all. Well, guess what? I would love to have you join my stamping team because guess what? $99 allows you to choose any $125 in product from either the mini catalog or the annual catalog. And we're going to throw in five packages of designer series paper that are six by six. These are in each of the color categories. It's a total count of 200 sheets. It's a $57 and 50 cent of value, absolutely free in addition to your starter kit, which by the way, ships for free. And you're gonna be able to enjoy that discount clear until the end of July of 2021. There's more information about that custom starter kit over on my website. Now, let me turn the camera around. I want to read your comments about this. I want to give you some information about the next live. Isn't this a fun card? I really, really just love this. And it wasn't difficult to create. I will tell you, it's one of those cards you're going to keep opening and closing. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please leave comments. I come back and I read every single one. Mark your calendar because I'm coming back live with you next Monday. And I'm looking at my calendar and I can't believe it's March 1st already. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It will be 8 p.m. Eastern time. All the products that I've used can be found in my online store. Go over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on shop. There you'll find the downloadable project sheet and everything else. And if you would do me one more favor before you go, in order to keep content free here on YouTube, it is a huge help. If you would click that thumbs up picture, which is a like, and share this video with your crafting friends. It allows us to be able to provide content for you, project sheets, and lots of other fun things. And while you're on my website, do me a favor, sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. We'll get a free tutorial every Thursday, right delivered to your inbox. It's a no frills email that I know that you'll enjoy. Megan, thanks so much for all your hard work tonight. And thank you all for being here with me. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday for another fabulous, fun, full project. Have a great evening.